Hi, my name is Veronica Barker Barzal, and I would like to show you a short demo on how I create my work. So my process, <clears throat> I use a variety of different types of blocks. Today I'm going to be showing you a process on a linoleum block. So first off, what I do is I will sketch with a pencil. Some people use a Sharpie. I personally don't like Sharpies because they tend to transfer onto the paper sometimes if you're not careful. So after that, I will take one of my carving tools, and this is a V-shape tool. Um, there's also rounded ones, depending on how thick you want to carve away. Usually when I start off, I will start off with one of the smaller, thinner V-shaped tools, just so I take off as little as I want and I can take off more later but you can never put back so you can take away but you can't fill in so you have to basically know what you're what you want to carve before you start carving and then go with it if you uh, if you make a mistake I call it a happy mistake you just have to figure out how to work that line into your final image. Um, you can definitely see the hand in the hand carved blocks. There's no line is ever exactly straight. So you do that and then after you're done carving you do a proof where you roll some ink on and you see if Everything that you carved is what you wanted carved out, or if you have to carve out some more. And then also the colors. You know, the color that you have in your head, you put down, it may not be quite the color that you want once you see it on paper. So you can do a couple proofs, and then you can do a final run of a, of a, a limited edition, or you can do some mono prints. You don't, you don't have to print hundreds of thousands of them. Here is another example of a finished product. This is on an unmounted linoleum block. The first one you saw was on a mounted linoleum block. So the next thing that you do after you're done carving your block or your plate is to ink it. The ink that I'm using here is a oil-based ink, it's water-soluble. And I, I never quite like black that's out of a can or a tube. I like to try to create my own black, which you can do by mixing brown and blue. This black is a bit more greenish. So generally, just take up your plate, wherever you want that color. So I, I sometimes call myself a lazy printmaker where a lot of printmakers will use couple blocks for each color. I instead will try to carefully roll the ink where I want it and do it that way. Mm -hmm. 
most of my um, most of my editions become varied editions because not each one is exactly the same. Since I don't consider myself a machine, I don't think I need to make each one exact. So the first step before you start printing is that you should always check the pressure of your press. Even if you've done it before at this, this level, it may be slightly off. So you should always check. So I'm using another plate that is the same thickness. And I'm putting newsprint on top of it, and then I'll be able to see if the pressure is right or either too much or too little. So if I was doing a zinc plate, you can hear this like, this kakunk as the roller goes over it. But the linoleum tends to be very quiet. So <clears throat> there's different papers that you can use in printmaking. The standard, most common used papers, I believe, would be BFK. Reeves or arches. It's a printmaking paper, but it's also a watercolor paper. Um, the weight can go pretty much from 80 to like 320 or something. Don't quote me on that. Um, the paper that I tend to use, and I, I will use that paper when I'm doing etchings because you, you can get that paper wet. You want to soak the paper before you print an etching. Um, but with relief, you don't have to get the paper wet. And the paper that I like to use is uh, French paper, which comes out of Michigan. It's a family-run mill. So I, uh, yeah, just try to support local as best as I can, even though this is not local, but stateside, right? So, versus global. They, um, they make a lot of paper for letterpress, for silk screening. That's how I discovered it, from silk screening. And I realized that I could use it with relief. Um, with relief, you can also get the paper wet. 
and print it. So these are blankets, um, and they basically protect the plate and the roller. The newsprint is more of a classical thing where you put the newsprint in order to protect the blankets from the sizing of the paper. And then you let it roll. come the other way so you can see it. Yeah, some some printmakers go twice, other printmakers only go once. Sometimes there's a fear if you go twice that the plate can skip. And with the unmounted linoleum, I don't really have to worry about the plate skipping. It's a little closer to the bed. So then this is, well, it wasn't enough ink, but this basically gives you an idea of what it's going to look like. This was just a very quick demo on showing you one of the many processes of printmaking. If you would like to see more, please come visit us at The Loft in Aquapon, Virginia.